Hello, welcome back. Nicole Mashburn. And we're going to continue talking about tissues. And today we're going to focus on the connective tissues. So your connective tissues are your most abundant and widely distributed tissue type. They're everywhere. Remember I've used the word glue to describe connective tissues. It's literally what binds us together. And the functions of uh, connective tissues, besides binding and kind of holding us together like glue, is also support. They protect, they insulate, and they actually help to transport things, for example, the blood. And so when we think about the uh, different types of connective tissues, we're going to divide them into kind of four main divisions, and then I'm going to go through and go into even more specific detail about those different divisions. So you have something called connective tissue proper. And this is the glue I was talking about. Okay, this is kind of what holds us together. And you have examples called loose and dense connective tissue. And I'm going to go through each one of these as we move through this uh, talk. You have bone tissue. So bone is a type of connective tissue. That's our support. Okay, But it's also protection. So think about uh, your skull. What's inside your skull? Your brain. Uh, think about your ribs. What's being protected by your ribs? Your heart and lung. So bone is made up of two types of uh, connective tissue called spongy bone or spongy bone and a compact bone. You have something called cartilage, and we have three types of cartilage. We have hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage, and then we have blood. Okay, and so we all know what blood is. We'll talk more about blood later on uh, uh, in another uh, another lecture. So we have connective tissue proper, we have bone, we have cartilage, and blood. Those are our four main types. Then we're going to go through and talk in more detail about the subclasses of each one of those types of tissue. All right, so some characteristics of connective tissue. Connective tissues are not all the same. They have different degrees of blood supply or vascularity. Some are highly vascularized, they have a lot of blood supply, and some are avascular, they have no blood supply. So for example, cartilage has very little blood supply compared to bone, which has a lot of blood supply. It's actually better to break a bone than tear cartilage because bone will heal better because it has more blood supply. They have differences in the types of ground substance that they have, uh, and that's just the medium through which the solutes can diffuse between the capillaries and the cell. So if you're talking about a bone cell, how does the bone cell um, get the uh, nutrients from the blood capillary? It has to diffuse through the bone as a different type of medium than, say, the cartilage or, say, the blood or, say, uh, fat. So different types of medium through which solutes can diffuse between the capillaries and the actual cell that's making the connective tissue. Uh, when we talk about connective tissues, uh, you have cells that are separated by some type of non-living extracellular matrix. So think about blood is separated by the plasma. That's the non-living matrix. Uh, bone, you have the little bone cells, and they're separated by the actual hard stuff called the bone. Uh, if you talk about cartilage, you have the little cartilage site, the cartilage cells, and they're surrounded by the plasticky looking stuff that we call cartilage. All right, so let's talk a little bit more in detail about what I'm talking about um, as far as those different types of cells. When you're looking at cells uh, and you want to give them a name, if you end the name in blast, that means it's a mitotically active cell. That means it's young and dividing, okay? If it's now named a site, that means it's a mature cell, all right? So blast are young mature, um, dividing cells and sites are mature cells. So Fibroblasts are cells uh, in connective tissue that make kind of a fiber type material. Chondroblasts and chondrocytes, when you see the word chondro, that means cartilage. I'm just kind of giving you some ideas of how to break down these words. So as we go forward, you can kind of start guessing what it means just by learning the vocabulary. Osteo always means bones. So you have osteoblasts, which are young bone cells, and osteocytes, which are old bone cells. Uh, you have hematopoietic cells. Poesis means to make. Hemo means to means blood. So these mean to make blood. These are the types of cells that make uh, red and white blood cells. And then you have cells like fat cells and mast cells and macrophages. So I'm going to use some of these terms. I just want to introduce them to you now so you can... I like it when you can start to break down words. So, so I really want you to start learning the vocabulary. So when you see words, see if you can break it down. Because if you can break it down, sometimes you can figure out 
uh, what it means. So when you think about connective tissue, uh, you're going to have fibers associated with it. And uh, the three types of fibers that you see associated with connective tissues are collagen, elastin, and reticular. So collagen thinks strong. This is what uh, gives uh, connective tissue their strength. Very, very strong. There's a lot of it. Elastic fibers, these allow for stretch. Okay, so when you're thinking about these connective tissues, think about where they are and what they do, and that'll give you an indication if they have a lot of elastic fibers or a lot of collagen fibers. Uh, reticular fibers, whenever you see the word reticular, that means web-like. And so these are going to be highly branched fibers. And so uh, a lot of times when you see reticular fibers, think web-like, you can think about uh, support uh, scaffolding. They actually kind of make a, a support system to surround and support tissue. Something's got to hold your tissues and your blood vessels in place, and the reticular fibers help, help you do that. They form a web to hold things in place. So this is just a generalized connective tissue, and I want you to realize connective tissues um, can be made of many different types of cells. Where we talked earlier about epithelial tissues, a lot of times you'll have just a layer, one or two or three layers of a, of a type of cell making an epithelial tissue. Connective tissues can uh, have many different types of uh, cells associated with them and, and uh, and um, different types of fibers. So in just a general type of connective tissue, you could expect to find macrophages, which help with immunity. You can find fibroblasts, which would make those fibers. Lymphocytes also help with immunity. Fat cells for cushioning. Uh, mast cells, those things make histamine. They play a role in immun uh, uh, immunity. Neutrophils, that's a type of white blood cell. You can have all of these types of cells kind of in and, in and amongst your um, connective tissue helping to keep, uh, keep you healthy. Uh, you're going to have a blood supply many times, not always, associated in the connective tissue. You're going to have some kind of a matrix. It could be hard like bone. It could be liquid like blood. It could be kind of plasticky like cartilage. And you're going to have those fibers, some for strength, some for stretch, and some for kind of a web-like support. And depending on the type of tissue, you'll have varying amounts of these three. So all of these, you know, in some kind of form or fashion and, and uh, ratio can be found throughout your different types of connective tissues, okay, in general. So we're going to talk about some specific uh, connective tissues and what they're made out of. Made of. All right, so that first class of connective tissue are your uh, connective tissue propers, just good old connective tissue. <laughs> and so you have what's called loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. And these are your examples. Uh, areolar, uh, or some people say areolar, so areolar or areolar, uh, adipose and reticular are loose, and then dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic are your dense connective tissues. Let's talk about those. All right, so loose areolar, okay? So again, just like with epithelial tissue, we've got your name of the tissue, a description of it, what it does, and where you can find it. So this type of tissue uh, is going to be a gel-like matrix. It's going to have all the fiber types. It's going to have fibroblasts, macrophages, mast cells, blood cells. Um, and this is going to be what kind of wraps and cushions our organs, okay? So think almost like bubble wrap, kind of protecting our organs. And they can play a, um, an important role against inflammation. They have cells that can eat bacteria. Uh, and they also allows you to hold tissue fluid. So it kind of keeps, uh, kind of keeps your fluid, your organs kind of nice and cushioned in a fluid environment. Um, you'll find them under uh, epithelia. They uh, surround your organs and your capillaries. So this would be an example of that just below um, an epithelial layer. You actually have some of this um, when you think about when you hit yourself and maybe you get a swelling, that's that, uh, that type of tissue. You can hold a lot of fluid and so you'll get swelling in that type of tissue. It's able to, to stretch and hold lots of fluid um, like an inflammation and swelling. Adipose, this is another example of loose connective tissue. This is fat, okay? So adipocytes uh, are the names of the fat cells. They're called adipocytes. And so this whole thing, that is a fat cell. That's actually the nucleus right there. So each one of these is an adipocyte 
And this is just a big bubble uh, of fat. And it's so big that it pushes the nucleus kind of to the side. And so we use our fat uh, to uh, help us um, reserve food. Like we store up food in our fat. Think about a bear going into hibernation and they put on a lot of fat before they go into hibernation. They help us prevent heat loss. Again, uh, think about an animal that puts on a lot of fat to help it stay warm in the wintertime. And it supports and protects our organs, so it's like a cushion. And so, you know, you're going to see fat under the skin, it's around your organs, there's actually fat around your eyeballs, and in your abdomen and in the breast. So there's pretty much fat everywhere, okay? Again, protection and support of the organs. Fat is a food reserve, and it allows us to protect against uh, heat loss. All right, reticular. So you see how it's kind of web-like? So this is that web-like, uh, and they form... Um, like I said, kind of like a scaffold. And so they form the support. It's like an internal skeleton for your organs almost. And so one of the places you'll see these are your lymphoid organs, like your spleen. And uh, your spleen is where uh, it's part of your immune system. And so your, your blood and your lymph, your, your lymph, uh, lymph fluid will flow through your spleen. And uh, it's kind of a, a, a filter to get out any kind of bacteria that you need to get rid of. And, and um, also any place to get rid of old red blood cells. Uh, so it's kind of like a sieve, like a colander, and so as stuff flows through the spleen, through this web-like um, uh, colander, things can be removed from uh, either the lymph or the blood as it goes through the spleen. All right, so dense connective tissue, uh, we have dense regular. And if you look at dense regular, it's dense, hence the name, and it has a really regular pattern, okay, regular pattern got a lot of collagen fibers and these um, um, fibers are going to be kind of parallel there's not a lot of elastic fibers um, and this is what attaches your muscles to bones um, it attaches bones to bones it's really strong and so think about a tendon okay and a ligament so the things that that hold your muscles and mus muscles and bones together are made up of dense regular tissue and because they're parallel and they're regular, they only move in one direction. So muscles that only that only or joints that only move in one direction, you're going to have this type of tent, dense regular because they're they're parallel and they only move in one direction. Now, if it's irregular, that means it's just kind of everywhere. It's not parallel anymore. You've still got collagen. You've got a little more elastic fibers associated with that. Um, also very strong, but it can, um, it's, it's more movable. So think about, uh, you would find this in a joint that has a little more mo mobility, uh, things that can move in more than one direction. Well, so those fibers, because they're not all parallel in one direction, they're a little more flexible and that they can move in different planes. So that would be a uh, dense, irregular connective tissue. Then last but not least, you have your dense elastic. And this is going to be uh, lots of elastic fibers, not as much uh, collagen, uh, allows for recoil. So these things can stretch and then go right back to their original shape. And so you see this in your large arteries because every time your heart pumps, it's going to push blood into those arteries and they're going to expand and then they're going to collapse, expand and collapse. And so you would find elastic uh, connective tissue in your large arteries. Also in the ligaments in your vertebral column because you, you can bend over and come back. Uh, and in your bronchial tube, as you breathe in, they expand and, re they, and recoil and expand and recoil. So things that can stretch and go back to their original shape can have this type of tissue in them. All right, now you have your cartilages, okay? So there's uh, hyaline, elastic, and fibro. If, if I mention cartilage, I'm almost always talking about hyaline. It's everywhere, okay? You do have some elastic, it's the most flexible, and then fibrocartilage is the strongest, okay? So we're going to talk about this more when we talk about the bones, uh, but we will just briefly cover it right now. So this is the matrix, okay, and these are the little uh, lacuna that have the chondrocytes in them. So lacuna just means little cell house, and the chondrocytes make the cartilage. So here's the cells making the cartilage in the little house, and here's all the cartilage matrix. If you've ever eaten a chicken bone, you know that piece of plastic on the end of the bone, that's the cartilage, okay? So hyaline cartilage is everywhere. 
Uh, it supports and reinforces. It's very resilient. Uh, it resists uh, compression. So um, it's actually the template for our bone. So embryos have a cartilaginous skeleton that then turns into bone. Um, all of your bones, your long bones, like your bones in your arm and your leg, they're going to have hyaline cartilage associated with those, with those bones on the ends of them. Uh, there's cartilage that connects your ribs to your sternum. This is all hyaline, hyaline cartilage. We call those our costal cartilages because costal means ribs. Uh, the cartilage that makes the end of your nose, so the, this cartilage right here on the end of your nose, that is uh, hyaline cartilage. Your trachea and your larynx are hyaline cartilage. So if I mention cartilage, it's just about all the cartilage in our body. There's just a few exceptions, and I'm going to talk to you about those, the elastic and the fibrocartilage. So this is elastic, and so same thing, you have your lacuna with your little chondrocytes in there, but you have more elastic fibers, okay? So you've got that same cartilaginous matrix, but it has fibers embedded into it. So these are really flexible, okay? So they can recoil back to their original shape. So the two places you find elastic cartilage are your ear, the pinna, so if you bend your ear down, it flaps back to where it's supposed to be, and the epiglottis which is a little flap that covers your trachea. So when you swallow, that covers your trachea so that food doesn't go down your airway. So that's the two places you find elastic cartilage. Fibrocartilage, looking at the name, fibro, it's got a lot of collagen. So what did I tell you about collagen? Makes it strong. This is really, 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 really strong. So again, you've got your little lacuna with chondrocytes inside. This is your matrix with lots and lots of... Um, collagen fibers. These are really uh, good at absorbing shock. So you're going to see these uh, between your vertebra. Uh, they're between your knee, uh, between your, your femur and your tibia. It's the discs of your knee. So it's the joint between the, it's basically a, a disc, a little fibrocartilaginous disc between your femur and your tibia that allows you when you run to absorb that shock. And also your two hip bones uh, that, that to hold them together, you need something really, really strong. Those are two big bones, and they support a lot of weight. It's called your pubic symphysis. So it's a piece of uh, fibrocartilage that holds those bones together. All right, so that's where you would find fibrocartilage. All right, bone. I'm not going to talk a lot about this because we've got a whole unit on bone later, but it's the hard form of connective tissue. Uh, a lot of times you'll see the word osseous. So if you see the word osseous, I'm talking about bone and it has lots and lots of blood supply. Uh, here again, just like cart uh, cartilage, you have a, uh, these little cell homes, and these is, this is where the bone cells live, and they basically make the, the bone, and the bone uh, just kind of um, is formed around those little lacuna. And this whole thing here, this is called an osteon, this is a, a structural component of bone, and each one of these is going to have an artery and a vein associated with it. So bone is going to be hard, it's going to be calcified, that's what makes it hard. It's going to have collagen, so it's strong. It's going to have a lot of blood supply. Um, its function is to support and protect. Uh, it's what allows us to move, so it, it provides the lever so that muscles can move. So when muscles contract, they move the bone. Uh, we use it as a bank. Bone stores calcium. We have bone marrow, which is actually a place that we can store fat. Um, and it's where our blood cells are made. Okay, so where do you find it? In bones. And we'll, again, we'll do lots more detail on this in a future unit. So just right now, learn some general ideas about bone. All right, blood. This is the liquid form of connective tissue. Okay, and everything about blood is the, the cells are going to be made in the bone marrow. Okay, so they're made in the bone marrow and they migrate into the blood vessels and then they're, they're going to float around in the plasma. So the plasma is the liquid matrix of the blood. So here's blood. You have, this is a white blood cell. This is a white blood cell. All these are red blood cells. You'll learn this and you'll learn how to identify all of these in your second anatomy. The function of blood, transport gases, carbon dioxide, oxygen, transport nutrients, transport electrolytes, transport everything. So what you're trying to transport throughout your body, you're going to use your blood. And where do you find it? Inside your blood vessels. 
All right, so that is all about connective tissues. So um, I will see you again. We're going to talk about nervous tissue and muscle tissue. And thank you for your attention.